Hi, Diamond Girls. So you are ready to call forth the man you want to have in your life as a husband, as your forever guy. You're ready to start dating. You want to know what it's going to take to call forth the right man into your life. What are you looking for in a relationship? How do you know what to look for in a relationship? How do you date? How do you go about getting commitment? And are you ready to get married one day? What are the things that you want in life? Well, worry not. I'm going to share five of my top feminine energy tips on when you are ready to call forth the one you're meant to be with. If you're new to my channel, I'm Adrienne Everhart. I'm a feminine energy dating and relationship coach. I have helped thousands upon thousands of women all over this planet find and call forth the man they're meant to be with. I teach you how to balance your feminine and masculine energy to really make a relationship work and feel very solid and healthy in a new way that you likely haven't experienced. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about today, it will have that feminine energy perspective and value, which is all about receiving from the man. So let's get started. So this first one I talk a lot about in my course, New Man Manifesto, which is a manifesting program. It teaches you all about reflecting on your past experiences. So your previous relationship, especially if you're deep in heartbreak right now, it's a good chance that any man you're dating or going to come in contact with is not going to feel anything like your ex. And that's a good reason. We don't want this to feel familiar because familiar will mean I am repeating old patterns. Homey, which means like, oh, this feels cozy and homey and cocooned and love. That's a different feeling. And that actually takes time for that to happen. And I believe it takes more time the older we get. It takes a little more time for someone to feel comfortable and for our hearts to warm up, especially, especially if you have been hurt in the past. So as you reflect on your relationships in the past, even the beautiful ones or the ones that ended really badly, I want you to pick out some key components that felt really, really good to you. Find out what was it that he was saying or doing that felt so wonderful and be really, really specific. Sometimes when we're experiencing limerence or just passion or intensity or chemistry, especially sexual chemistry, we can begin to see that relationship through a different lens. And it isn't always reality. I know I used to really pine for an ex of mine in the past. And the truth is the guy really wasn't meeting my needs on some really basic levels. So I want you to get really particular about what they did do right and make sure you write it down and write down how it made you feel. So one of the things I really loved about my husband, Jeff, while we were dating, is that he would be very chivalrous with me and very gentle and kind and accommodating. He was on his best behavior, opening doors and listening to every word I had to say and all of his attention, and it felt wonderful. Now, of course, relationships are gonna wax and wane, we're gonna get complacent with each other, but that's really something that he still does is he gives me a lot of attention. I must admit, I like being worshiped. And so that was an important thing for me to have in a relationship is I wanted a man who loved to give me a lot of attention and time because it feels really good to me. Some people need a lot of space. Well, I need my space too, but I really like attention and back rubs and pampering and, and someone who can really enjoy doing something like that. Just a little side note on that. I think whenever you are in a relationship with the oldest child of the family, especially if they had younger siblings, you're likely to get more of those attributes. So anyway, not to digress, but get really clear on what past relationships felt like, where it felt good, and why it felt good to you. This next one is easy, but really difficult in some ways. And that's that I want you to learn from your mistakes. I want you to look at your past especially when you weren't your best. Now, don't get me wrong. We're not all perfect. We're not always going to do or say the right things. But there is a reason you cheated on some boyfriend. There is a reason you lied to another boyfriend. There is a reason you got mad and used every curse word on him possible. You know, there's a reason you did all of these things, not just that you have some anger or rage problem. Like there was something going on where your needs weren't getting met. You weren't feeling fulfilled. And if you can't find out what was going on and you were behaving badly, 
that's where you do want to take it up with a licensed therapist or a professional who can help you understand behaviors and characteristics and things that you maybe have done in your past that really aren't in alignment with truly who you are. You also want to learn from mistakes in the past, like with your ex, where you gave too much of yourself, where you over-invested in your ex, where you dropped everything that you were needing to do for your life and instead focused on them. You want to learn from these mistakes about how you discounted yourself in order to keep this relationship going or how you pushed your feelings down to keep that relationship alive on life support. You want to learn from these mistakes and you want to make sure that the next partner that you have in your life doesn't have these qualities and that you don't repeat old patterns and mistakes that did not work for you in the past. I wanted to touch on really quickly about mirror and messenger and that I was every man I was dating was giving me like a little vision of myself or they were sending me a message about what it was I really wanted in a partnership. But I'll never forget one boyfriend I had had over. Uh, this is while Jeff and I were apart and I was dating other people. He came over and I could tell he had had like maybe a little bit to drink or something, but he thought he was being really funny and really cute by naming everything in my refrigerator. And what it was, was really irritating. Now I talked a little bit also about birth order and I'm the baby of the family and he's the baby of the family. And the baby of the families have, we have a way of being really cute to everyone except other babies in the family, <laughs> depending on how the baby was. If they were really the baby type or they were more the mature independent type, that can happen too. The thing is, this guy was really irritating me, but I also saw a little bit of a reflection of myself. Like I remembered times where I would just be doing or saying things that must have been totally exhausting to my partner, and I was just completely unaware of it. I was just in this, I can do no wrong mode. So I really learned how to look at some of my characteristics and behaviors and examine them from a more mature standpoint, whether or not these were attributes I really wanted to bring into a relationship or thoughts or things like that, that you might get an instinct or an impulse to do, you don't necessarily have to do. So I developed a little bit more of a third eye, a way to kind of watch myself and see, you know, is this really who I want to be in this relationship? Is this really how I want to represent myself? Now, this next tip is about communication. And that is you want to have a partner who can express themselves and listen and communicate. And you need to do the same. Now, I have a best selling ebook called 500 Ways to Talk to a Man that is full of scripts and things you can say and why you want to say these things and how you want to say them in your feminine energy so that a man can really hear and not just be in this knee jerk response of way of communicating. Now, one of the reasons that book is so popular and it helps so many people is that I get you to focus on how you're feeling and your body instead of having this knee jerk queen of the world reaction. Now I have a whole video about that. I'll link it below. It's in my whiteboard series, but that knee jerk reaction in communication is what keeps you from staying connected to your partner. Now the problem with this is, is that your monkey brain, this reactive part of you can respond emotionally and you really have to focus and train yourself to use your prefrontal cortex and find how you feel select your words very carefully. And I always say, form your sentence in your head, cut it in half, and then cut it in half again. Men understand less words. So the shorter and more succinctly you can say something to a man, the better he can receive it. Men also need things sometimes repeated exactly verbatim a few times over, and they'll kind of hack away at you and ask the same question, maybe three or four different ways, whereas you want to stay consistent with your answer. Maybe your partner in the past was avoidant or dismissive, or he was a high conflict personality, and you notice these communication traits, I would say usually by the fifth date, someone begins to show you who they really are. Now, in some cases, you can date someone for up to a year before they really, really show you who they are, how dysfunctional they can or can't be. And again, none of us are perfect beings. We are all capable of growth and mistakes and learning from things and moving on or not learning from things and moving on. 
But let's say you had a really avoidant partner in the past and you don't want to repeat that same sort of situation in your future relationship with a man. Look at those traits and characteristics that showed up as avoidant. And let's say things are going really good with this new guy, but you want to talk to him about it. You can say something like, I've noticed this has been happening, or I've noticed when I go to tell you about something, sometimes we stop connecting all of a sudden. I'm curious, is this how you always respond? Is this just how you communicate? You're able to ask these questions to really better understand a person. I don't think there is a man out there that is a perfect communicator that can just always listen and be attentive and not be dismissive or avoidant. There's a reason we talk about men going to the cave. And that's the beautiful thing behind masculine and feminine energy is that you get really realistic about what my partner can or cannot do, but you're able to take care of yourself and have your own needs and your own boundaries. This is the most important thing. Above all else, you don't want to be controlling another person. You want to be aware of how you feel. You also want a partner that is mature enough to be able to have adult conversation and communication with you. Now, you might have a guy that's really good and understands when you're you know, on your cycle that you're going to be teary-eyed and upset or something like that. He might be really empathetic then, But then when it's something about him, he might get real dismissive and avoidant. So part of your feminine energy talent is like knowing what a man can do and what a man cannot do. And this really isn't about forcing someone to do what they can't do. It's really about understanding, like, will this work for me long term? And can I find ways to communicate with my partner and have my needs met? So you're really looking for this flexibility in communication, this ability to adapt, learn, and communicate and grow together as a couple. There also needs to be a certain amount of compatibility. Now, you might have a situation where you have an arranged marriage or your family wants you to marry a very specific type of person in your culture or religion or background, or you might just have your pick of just anyone you want to marry in this world and say, oh, well, he's a Republican and I'm a Democrat and therefore we can't get married. Well, that's not true. I believe in a certain amount of compatibility, but it's not really the things you think, like we both like hiking or we both like vacations by the beach. Those things are important, but more than that, You have to find out what really, really matters in your relationship where you really want to be compatible and on the same playing field. This is why so often things like arranged marriages do work out because that compatibility can really be nurtured and formed as the two of you learning more about each other and growing together, but also accepting each other's differences. We're not always going to feel the same. We're not always going to agree about the same things and want to do the same things. So we have to be able to have autonomy. My first husband really wasn't into dressing up for Halloween or doing anything that was kind of crazy or going out in public and having fun. Like even a concert or something like that was really difficult for him. He had a lot of social anxiety. So I knew whoever I wanted in my next partnership, I wanted to do things that were really fun, like dress up on Halloween, have parties, have friends, maybe even occasionally go to a nude beach or something like that, you know, just really have fun and enjoy life to its fullest. Now, I will tell you, my current husband, he's a little on the shy side, but when he's with me, he's adventurous and he's kind of up for anything. And so we were able to find that compatibility. I will also tell you, we pretty much disagree about politics, but we agree about so many other things, especially caring for our pets and our animals, health and wellness. We love cooking gourmet food and we're both avid movie and film lovers. So we have a lot of compatibility, especially music. So I want you to be able to find where you and your partner have compatibility. But remember, you don't have to agree about everything. A quick recap of all of this to sum it up is to really get clear about your core requirements in a relationship. Your core requirements can often sound like things like, I want him to make, you know, six figures a year. I want him to have perfectly straight teeth. I don't want him to have any children. They might sound something like that, like a rigid list of rules and must haves. But I want you to get really clear about what feels good to you in a relationship. 
what makes you satisfied, what makes you feel happy, warm, and cozy in your life and care for? What do those things look like to you? Again, for me, attention is a love language for me. I like attention and quality time. So find out what's important for you and how it will show up in your life. I really love this step because this is where you get really clear about how your life is going to look with your new partner. This is like sending the universe certified mail that says, this is what I am looking for. And the universe will just return it to you. It's amazing how it works. Now, if you're curious about this process, I have a couple of courses you want to look into. I have Fem Tools for Dating, which is Feminine Energy Mindset Method. And if you want to learn more about manifesting and calling forth your guy, look at New Man Manifesto. And I also have a course bundle, which has all of my courses. You can learn everything I have to offer. That's at my website in the links below, everheartcoaching.com. All right, Diamond Girls, I hope this video has been helpful. Lots of love. Bye-bye.